Okay, so uh, this is the first time that I've ever had to do anything like this, so if it's a crappy performance, that's luck, okay. I guess. Um, <laughs> so, uh, we, uh, Firk is going to change over the laptop here, we can change um, presentations. So, I just want to welcome you guys as, as, I suppose, the face, the owner of Arch Apparel. Um, I say that reluctantly because there is, there's so many different uh, people that work for us now, it's, it's crazy to think um, how far we have come. So, as much as I'm thankful to be here, talking to you guys and being that face. There was many people that make um, Arch Apparel what it is and, and who we want to be going forward. So um, thank you for coming here today. It's early. I had to set my alarm this morning and that, that always sucks. So uh, welcome to our space. This is a, an important place for us. Um, we, I don't know how many of you have followed our journey and things like that, but not too long ago, what are we now, October, so at the end of last year we were in a warehouse that was probably about a fifth, a tenth of the size of this place, um, and we have now, we're in this place. So this is an important place for us, I think uh, there's some pictures on the wall as you're leaving, I always try to look at it as well because this place when we first moved in didn't look like this, so we personally really basically tore the whole place of this building down and just left this retaining wall in the middle. Um, and because of that, we painted the floors, we painted the ceilings, we painted the outside. We were very much a part of bringing this place to life. So for us that work here, I think it is an important place that we come to and we value. So um, welcome to where we work, where we call kind of home for most of our, our lives, I guess, here more recently. So um, that's kind of where, where I wanted to start the presentation. You'll see there's uh, four other ladies no, nobody else. Up, up here with me. Um, we had a, a conversation last night. So uh, these people are intertwined throughout my presentation on flow. Um, they, I couldn't imagine doing this presentation without having at three and more recently Rachel um, up here to do this with us because it is a team effort. Again, I'm the face and started it, but this has taken us way further than I thought we would go. So. Um, I'll start on this and I go. So this is Meredith on the far right, and I'll keep it short because you'll want to know who each person is. Meredith, we have Liz next to me over here, Kirsten, and then Rachel. Um, the three in particular here, Meredith, Liz, and Kirsten, just to give you some background, Kirsten was my first full-time hire. She had been freelancing with us for, for a moment and then left a corporate structured environment. If you like to come to us, and at that point it was just me, and uh, we we did a lot of amazing things and I love coming to work with Kirsten every day. She's a creative like, genius to work with and, I, and she's always fun. We get derailed in conversations, but that's part of what some of you in this room are probably familiar with. So then we added Meredith quickly after that. Meredith came to us with a lot of retail experience and at the time we had a need for a retail um, person kind of just running that domain because we really had no idea what we were doing. So <laughs> Meredith came in and hit the, hit the ground running and, and she's been with us. Her role has now evolved and she runs basically all of our operations, which is a huge part of our business because we do so many online sales and, and different things like that that come in and out. We work with so many different retailers. Quickly after we added Liz, I always joke with Liz that Liz is like the most overqualified person that works here. Um, <laughs> she came to us and I feel like we were lucky to get Liz. She was, her circumstances brought her back to St. Louis um, and Liz now runs I mean, started by doing, I don't know, all kinds of things, but now she runs basically, make sure that we don't spend too much money, is the short of what Liz does. Um, which, as well as being, you joked about it earlier, like the mother of the group, so Liz is very analytical driven, um, and, and more numbers and time based, so if you're one of those people, I think she has good things to offer. And then more recently we did add Rachel, um, we're not sure how we feel about Rachel yet. But, uh, <laughs> no, Rachel's amazing. Uh, Rachel actually began as our assistant retail manager under Meredith, and then as our business quickly grew once Plate Gloria happened, and then finally once we won the Stanley Cup, it really took a different kind of feel. We had to move Meredith to the back, and then Rachel kind of took over the floor. So it's been a, a pretty amazing ride to get to this point. So that's a little bit about who these um, four women are. They are, uh, I always, I joke all the time that I just wanted to start a t-shirt company and like wear something that I liked wearing and now it has grown and evolved into to this space. So we're very fortunate, but to say that's from me would be overselling it. These four people are, are a huge part of that. So that's why I want them up here with us as well. Okay, so, I told you this one would be good. Um, okay, so when Samantha came to me and talked to me about flow, um, I really had no idea what necessarily how to interpret that the correct way. So it, it kind of brought up multiple different feelings of what that could look like, uh, what it felt like, and things like that. So 
oddly enough, I had an idea of what how I wanted to present this to you. However, it didn't really strike me until Wednesday last week exactly how I was going to present it. So it's, it's a unique take, I think. Um, it suits our brand, it suits our company, and hopefully is, I wanna make sure that as audience members that you're listening, that you can find something from what one of us is saying and apply it to your life, your job, anything happening. Um, and then I'll leave you guys with a takeaway that I think I found interesting and hopefully you guys will as well once we get to the completion of it. So, that's me. Um, <laughs> um, we tried to take photos here to show the different hats and things that we wear as an organization. Um, okay, so our mission statement we put up on the wall. What's interesting about this mission statement, this is my little guy, Bodhi. Um, just plug. Um, so, uh, is the mission statement is a new thing to, to us. Uh, writing a mission statement, I've never had to do that before. So again, this came from, I started this from a place of wanting a t-shirt for my own need and it has evolved. So I didn't write a business plan or a marketing plan or anything like that. So it's a little unconventional, but the mission statement is something I did think through and, and wrote out because we, we needed one because we kept on getting asked for one. So um, what they are is basically like points that I felt like if we hit these every time we come to work or every time it finishes, uh, at the day, I think we're, we're on a good thing. So being the St. Louis streetwear brand to us means like a striving to be number one, to be perfect, to make sure that we're always at the top of our game and doing the best that we can. Second one, they're being inspired by our city. Um, obviously I've relocated here, you're relocated here, you're from here, relocated here. So there's a lot of us at, from our team that aren't necessarily from here and maybe you are like that also, but we find inspiration from things in our city, whether it be simple things like the fleur de or different neighborhoods and things like that but that's always a, a driving force for us. Be focused on quality. Again, that's something that was important when we first started the company was, I had shopped for t-shirts around St. Louis and I couldn't find anything that I loved, anything that fit right, I, I was into. So we make sure that quality is something that we care about. We wanna make sure that's something we would wear. So we do a lot of testing and processing and now we're pretty much nailed at what we like, but that's important to us and I think that's important to our sustainability. Um, focus on fashion. So. We have good fashionable people that work here, which is helpful. So um, the, the ladies that work here are able to bring their sense, what they like here every day. And, and our thought is, there's a lot of companies that sell t-shirts and they can say all different kinds of cities, but we wanted to make it more lifestyle, make it more wearable. Um, I love when I travel and I see people at the airport in it. I love when um, I'm at the game or I'm at my local Cody's, which happened not long ago and there was plenty of people you know, in a hat or stuff. It's so, amazing. like flow, we're gonna have to disrupt the flow for one moment. <laughs> Um, if anyone parked at Regent's Bank, we need them to move. Okay. The Regent's Bank right here. I'm so sorry. Oh. <laughs> 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 yeah. Stop oh. it. Oh. 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 Can you park? Um, is there spaces by PPG right here? No. Okay. Oh, yeah. This is not part of the plan, right? <laughs> <laughs> and it's probably not. So, uh, yeah. Happy Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> now, as a brand, this has evolved for us, and um, part of flow for us has been how we have evolved as a brand, and part of that is 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 the the change of that. Um, don't get me wrong; I would love it to say what I had previously said because I think that's more uh, going to characterize who we are and what we stand for and things like that. But we sell onesies, and um, that's in, <laughs> it is what it is. Um, I'm not going to let something so small like that get in the way of our success and what we want to do. So it was a small adjustment to make. And, and that flexibility and that flow, if you like, I think is something that uh, we try to incorporate when we make decisions of, of who we want to be and things like that moving forward. All right, so what I did was, um, flow was a tricky one for me. So what I actually did was last Wednesday, so Wednesday last week, I guess, I went home and um, recorded my whole day into my cell phone because my take on flow initially was like, 
Okay, so flow obviously naturally leads you to think that it's a it's a linear, it's moving in a direction, and, that, and I believe that it's moving in a direction, it's flowing in a direction. So for us, it's you know what is that direction? What are we trying to actually achieve uh, as a business? And I think for us, I kind of characterize it as we have our sights on opening up a second store, we have our sights on growing our team, we have our sights on doing more custom apparel and things like that. All of those are what we're heading towards. So that's our that's our flow, if you like, of what's at the end. That's how we get there and the different elements of the day that I find interesting and that's essentially what I'll be presenting to you. So, Firth is back here. Um, why I'm pointing at Firth is, why this is interesting, this quote here, uh, to be in flow means to be able to move through the world with the ability to roll with whatever comes up. Interesting enough, flow, uh, Firth did not know, Firth works for us, did not know that flow was our topic. She was reading at night, and this was one of the passages she had read. If you like, from one of her books, she sent it to me, and I just felt like, like a, you know, what the hell kind of moment from that point of view of like, you're reading something that we're relating to right now, and we're talking about. So I find that very interesting. It's almost like it was meant to be from that point of view. So I take from this the ability to be flexible um, is kind of what our interpretation of, of flow is. Okay, last thing before we get to flow is this city circle here. Um, that's how I remember making this, and for some of you guys, you're going to hate to hear this, but I made it in PowerPoint. Um, <laughs> uh, and why I find that funny is because it doesn't matter for me what it was made in or how it's applied or anything like that. Um, it's what that represents and what that stands for. Most of us always wear it every day. Um, I see it a lot on people, and I think the cool part for me is that it's become a icon or a brand um, that people associate with because it tells the story of their hometown, that they support local. Um, they're still a fan of the Cardinals and the Blues, um, however, they're able to have a, a different fashion sense that still shows their love of the city, what we stand for, maybe you're community driven, maybe you know someone that works here and things like that. And, and for me, that's what I love. I love the fact that the people that work here, uh, in our community, they go to our, our gym, they go to our church, they go to different places that we frequent and I think that's important to, to us as we grow that we maintain that local element. Uh, and that's to me what that kind of represents, it's, it's everything to us. So, this is going to basically read like a day in the life of Archer Power from my point of view and the four ladies here will be uh, woven throughout it as they appear in, in my day, if you like. There's that page first. All right, so this is the chart we're gonna work at. Um, I'll just give you a quick walk through. High importance at the top, low importance at the bottom. So this is me basically walking from left to right on my day, if you like, and things will be charted from high importance to low importance. The overall message I wanna share with you here is as this graph, this chart, like a EKG starts to build, you can actually see that it goes up and it goes down, it goes backwards and it goes forward. But we start here and we end up over there. And that for me is the bigger picture that I want people to try and take from this as if there's anything to learn from this. So, for me, first thing was Bodhi, my little man. So, my wife happened to be away for work in a different state, which meant that I was on dad duty. So, my day started super high important, doesn't necessarily mess with my flow of the business and those things that I talked about trying to achieve. So, this is little Bodhi. That's his one-year-old birthday cake. He has hair now, and there he is with me. Um, so, that's where my day started. Uh, and then I'm going to take you on that journey of kind of where it leads and, and, and the ladies that, that come to follow. So, first thing up, I'm clicking this button like it's broken. Um, he's cussing. So, I get to work, the first thing I'm trying to hit is our projects. So, what are we working on? Collaborations or something Sam touched on. We do a lot of those. And right now, that seems to be coming in hot and heavy, especially getting towards holiday time. So, my first point of contact is Kirsten. So, uh, Kirsten can take it away in regards to where her kind of flow intercepts in mine, and then I'll continue back on mine. We are quick. Oh, no. Yep. <laughs> right to right. Oh, wait. My left, your right. Oh, good. This made it. Okay, does anyone watch the show The Good Place? Here's my point. Okay. This is how they... I said this as a joke, but it actually made it up here. This is how they explain like regular life time versus like time in the afterlife, and they call it Jeremy Jeremy. And I was like, oh, this is like what my day looks like compared to most people's. Um, the dot stands for Tuesdays. Um, <laughs> so this is okay. So we're gonna click through this because this is. Is it? Am I doing it right first? Keep going. So this is where my day goes. 
<laughs> oh, she gave me more time. In my notes, I put, it's 4.50, so she was gracious to me. Okay. <laughs> the picture I sent her looked like was literally this. This was me drawing my day of flow. Um, I showed this to someone, and they were like, that looks wildly inefficient, which for most people it does, right? So, um, Kali's plug, every day starts with coffee. This will directly affect everyone that I come into contact with that day. Um, so with, that starts with everything. Um, I usually start by checking my emails, mostly because I don't really care that much about my emails because I'm an artist. But usually I'll find an email or something from like a collab partner on an art deck that I sent a couple days ago. So now I've gone, jumped back a couple days in time to find revisions from a project that is still going on. Um, We'll have about 10 projects, collections at any given moment. Um, so from there, depending on my mood and like level of importance, deadlines, timelines, whatever, I might start working on revisions right away. So then I go over there. Um, I was supposed to say collab number two. Uh, this next one, so I might get asked a question about a different project. That could be a mock-up, could be an artwork, could be something about a photograph from three weeks ago. Um, that will probably cause me to get up and become overly involved in whatever question it was that they just asked me. Um, from there, I'll just see, this is how well it translated. <laughs> Didn't even really go. So I kind of go all the way around. Um, but then I'll come back to my desk and I'll have left a tab open. So that'll remind me to go back to the revisions that I was working on before. Uh, at some point during that, Liz will be like, Kristen, look at this really cute Instagram. And I'll be like, okay. <laughs> um, so she'll show me like a leopard print top or you know, a marble printed trash can. <laughs> and I will for sure go online and look it up, whatever it is. And while I'm online shopping, I will probably see like some cute crop product or some cool NASA t-shirt that I'm like, oh, this would be a really cool idea for this other project we're thinking of. So I will ask um, like an intern or something like, something super specific, but also very big. I would like you to find this exact thing, but also anything else, um, which is really can be helpful. Um, so, so in the middle of that, my Apple Watch will tell me to stand up, and I'll be like, okay. So I'll walk around the building um, in which someone I will see DoorDash their lunch. I'll be like, oh yeah, I wanted lunch too. So I'll sit down and I'll eat lunch. As I'm eating lunch, I'll remember that I have revisions for Collab 1 open. So I will go back to those. While I'm in the middle of those, someone will be like, hey, Kristen, we need like more photos for the store up front, like the kind of data we need in product photos. Again, depending on how I'm feeling about Collab 1, I will either write myself a note to do it later that week, or I will be like, perfect, great break. I'm going to go look through photos right this second. Um, roughly about the end of my day, well, I guess 4.10. Um, I'll remember that I had to send artwork to somebody before the end of the day. Luckily for us, end of day is very non-specific. Um, sometimes I call that 10 p.m. So then I will work super, super efficiently and send it off in time, and then I will drive home to watch garbage TV. Uh, it's like a good place to stay. <laughs> um, the reason I feel like it's important to show my day like this the way that it is it looks super crazy, it looks chaotic. For someone like Liz, this will put a brain in a pretzel. Um, but this is just how my brain works, right? Like I bounce from place to place. I, my whole background is in design and arts and this is just how I function. And it can be really difficult and stressful um, and it made me nervous working in like a nine to five environment because my brain doesn't work nine to five. It's not beginning to end, it's not left to right. It is just a cluster of nonsense. Um, so through my impression, I've sort of had to learn how to still do what I do and use the creativity that I have, but in a more efficient way. So um, a couple of things I've learned to do that way is um, what I call productive procrastination. Um, things like when I need to stand up, I'll go walk the store and sort of see what's going on and I'll chat with my employees and um, little tasks that need to be done but aren't super important. But that way I feel like I can take a break from the project I'm working on and sort of refresh my brain, but I'm still also getting something done. Um, I also am a big fan of leaving tabs open because I will forget whatever is on my screen. And the Apple support guy that I talked to was like, you have 30,000 tabs open. That's like just running your computer. I'm like, no, 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 it's fine. Um, because it reminds me to come back to what I'm working on and that helps me to like get things done. I'm the, probably the most easily distracted person in the office, so things like that and finding 
understanding how I work and knowing that about myself and then being able to combat that proactively has been really helpful in my career. Um, and yeah, so just, I think just learning about yourself and understanding how your brain works, a lot of creatives work this way and that's okay and it can still function in the fast paced time timeline driven world that we live in. Um, you just have to find ways to bring yourself back, like allow yourself to be creative and move around, but also find ways to bring yourself back to what you're originally working on. And, and that's my day. And that's that. <laughs> cool, thank you. Um, so what I, I, I love, and I, as you go through everyone's, Kirsten will probably have more to say than most. She's been here the longest, has a, a, her arms wrapped around a lot of our business. So um, looking at that, uh, I think it's, I find it interesting because as you we see other people that they're going to chart very differently, but she is a creative person um, and some of her best ideas come as she's walking out the door having done nothing that whole day. So <laughs> I, I, it never true. feels like um, that. <laughs> um, so it is interesting to see this and, and, and as I get towards the end, I want you guys to, to think about what yours may look like and then that takeaway that I'll, I'll leave you with is to kind of like try and do one yourself and, and, and I found it interesting. Um, Okay, so back to me, I'm jumping around here, so I'm falling down to low importance, and you'll see over the next couple here, they're really going to jump up and down, and what these are, um, are staff questions. So, if you're somebody who is answering a lot of questions in your role at your job, like you have a lot of people that report to you, or you, you people, you're the go-to, and as a small business, um, it, we still treat this like a small business, and people still essentially, you know, it's Aaron's business, and we need to ask him permission if we're spending X amount of dollars and things like that. And that element does obviously run through because we're not corporate, we don't have chains to get through if you like. Um, but the questions are an interesting one and I suppose the challenge to think about, I don't have the answer for you, is um, how far they move you in that flow. In other words, if I get asked a question from somebody who has, or just a statement, I had someone last week, I've got a good idea for you and, and they're great, I love those, but it really does pull you down on your day of productivity. Because I, I like to think I'm a nice person and I want to give that person time to, to tell me their idea. It may be a really good idea. And some of the best ideas we've had come from all over the place. Um, we did a playoff shirt for the Blues two years ago and the sh person who designed it was my six-year-old mother-in-law and nobody knew that. We just sent them all off to the Blues and they selected one they wanted and it actually ended up being hers and I don't think she knows one player on the team. So it, <laughs> the ideas can come from anywhere. So I stay open to it. Um, but it's interesting because this, this can derail your day really quickly. Up, down, like you got questions, you, you find it hard to focus. And essentially this is a time movement. So think of it from that point of view. So um, staff questions generally come from the retail floor. And that's probably because they're not necessarily plugged in as much into our day-to-day -day activities of the business because they're on the floor dealing with front facing with customers, which is hugely important because as a brand or as an identity, they're the face. Um, so now I'm going to flip, flip over to Rachel, uh, who's probably going to be the most no nervous person to talk here. Um, so good luck, Rachel. Yeah. yeah, this one's going to be the death of me, so just bear with me really quickly. <laughs> um, yeah, so... Oh, I, oh, you have it. Yes. So I didn't do anything right, so now they just have pictures for mine, not like a chart. Um, <laughs> yeah, um, so I just say like a lot of my day revolves around, I'm just trying to create a certain atmosphere and environment, um, and experience for our customers, um, both in the store, but also at all the pop-ups that we do. Um, you know, obviously we're trying to make every customer feel welcome whenever they walk in, but also to have a lot of fun. You know, usually we have like a, a ping pong table, basketball, pull through, all that sort of stuff. Um, but um, it requires a lot of um, me being flexible in order to make this happen um, and everything runs smoothly. Um, you know, we'll have staff call sick, so then I'll be scurrying to either find someone to take their spot, um, even though they're supposed to do that, or um, just being flexible <coughs> with the staff that I do have. <laughs> um, you know, or communicating with Meredith in the back about making sure everything's out on the floor so then the customer obviously can buy the product because that's what we're here for. Um, or, you know, going out of my way to set up um, at a pop-up downtown, even though someone else could do it, um, just to make sure it's exactly how I want and everything's shoppable um, and everything looks good and in order to set up all my associates for success um, throughout the weekend and everything. Um, yeah, that's, <laughs> that's pretty much all I have. Just, <laughs> but yeah, here you go. Awesome. <laughs> that probably kept me up all night. So, <laughs> um, so 
it is interesting from a front-facing position how you have to adjust. Uh, her needs on a day-to-day -day basis are so different than the four of us um, that we're, we, we don't recognize that probably as much as we need to. So uh, hearing, to, hearing Rachel's day and how that moves is something that I, I plan to actually get with her. After doing this, I've learned a lot about myself, so I'm interested to see how it applies to other people. Okay, so back on my chart here. So I'm going backwards a little bit, lunch plans. So we all have these things come up. Um, the key, and I have takeaways, is, is how long we spend on them. Um, are there ways that we can plan, or I can plan to avoid going backwards here, yet still eating, um, which we'll get to at the end. So back on, on to important things. We all have these moments, family thoughts. There's a million things that appear in between all of these things, right? So, and I'm trying to make this apply to all of us. Um, Throughout the day, we think of different things, and, and you get derailed. So my wife happened to be on happened to be away for work. So my thought goes to like family. What do I? Where's my son? Is he okay? Do I need food? Is everything okay? Where are the dogs? All those type of things that are racing through my mind while still trying to do all the things that I that I want to do. So groceries. Do we have things for dinner? Um, low importance, but still important. Okay, it's still a vending machine. So I'm switching back onto work mode now. So for me, this uh, you'll probably see, you'll start to see a pattern here where work is starting to be done and achieved. So I've got through some of the derailments and now I'm on to like, okay, I'm switching on. But we're also looking at about midday, one o'clock at this point, soda machine. So we bought a vending soda machines back here off Facebook Marketplace and um, there's some good deals on there. And we grabbed this and our plan is to put it in the store and merchandise it out and you can basically vend a, a candle drop down and it'll have different goods for you. And this is just another creative fun way that we're trying to sell t-shirts um, at the end of the day. So this keeps us inspired, I'll be honest, like it's interesting what a vending machine can do having it back here for, for a team because it's fun to look at, it's fun to play with and once it hits the floor, we imagine that everyone will feel the same way. And for us, that's just creative outside of the box thinking. It wasn't a thought we went into the day thinking. I just happened to be on Facebook and on the right-hand side of my column, there was this and we got it. So Meredith goes with her boyfriend and picks it up one day in the middle of a small town in Missouri and here it is back here. So, these little things are interesting um, because I'm not making this up. This is real, this happens to us, and this is all happened in this one day. So, um, ideas. Ideas for me usually, uh, for a lot of you, probably come in different ways and different forms. I am not a great person at um, communicating. I'm not timely, Samantha can speak to that. I um, keep notes in my notebook, but I'm also um, probably somebody who keeps it mostly in my head, uh, which, which isn't great because it can lead to panic and it can lead to being impatient because the thoughts are listed in your head for a week, but no one else has had it. And that's that's something that I need to be better at, I think, as, as a leader of the business. Um, ideas are something that, I love ideas, I don't care if they're bad or good. I, it, to me, it shows that someone that works here, or if it's somebody who shops here that has ideas, that they care. And as a small business owner, there's nothing more important than having people that care and they want success for the business, because that's how we grow. So if someone has an idea, it makes me feel like they're thinking about this business, and sometimes those ideas come in the evening or the early morning, and that's it like warms my heart from that point of view of these people care, they want to be here, they want to see us do well. So marketing is usually kind of flows in different forms. Um, you'll see that there's gonna be a couple of jumps that fall down here. Call from sales reps. Is anyone a sales rep in here? It's totally okay. I was prior to this. Um, it's not a bad thing, and I hated putting this down uh, to, to the unimportant, but we, it, it's a love-hate. It is what it is. Um, it really can derail your day, and it really pulls you down in productivity sometimes. So it, it was kind of iffy to add that one. Now we jump back up where that transition from here to here is a talking point that I wanted to discuss really quickly, is what brings you as individuals back up to like a high priority, a high importance. So if you're stuck in here, as you, I like, I challenge all of you guys to, to do this one day, just speak it into your phone and then graph it out. It only took me about half an hour to just pen it out. But it's interesting to see what got me from there to up there and what it was was an idea. So for me, someone having an idea just totally switched my whole brain from being lost and being frustrated about a salesperson, you know, derailing me and brought me back into the space and the headspace I wanted to be in. So, it's interesting, find out what it is for you that brings you back up to that level I think is interesting. That leads us to Meredith. She'll be the second most nervous person here. Uh, Meredith runs, like I said, uses a retail, now operations, and is fueled by... So yeah, I'm always the first one in and I like to have a Diet Coke every morning. Um, much like Kirsten, if I don't have my Diet Coke, it might affect how I interact with you. <laughs> um, 
Um, so as I said, uh, as Aaron said, um, I used to cover the front of the, front of the store. Um, now I've taken on much of the back of the house, um, mainly like with the fulfilling process. Um, so when I come in, I like to be the first one here just so I can check those emails, make sure everything's like operationally like, running smoothly. That way when everyone does get here, it's like smooth sailing. I've already kind of worked out the kinks of the day. I've already foreseen all the issues that might happen. Um, so that's super helpful for me. Um, <laughs> but essentially like my emails consist of like anywhere from donations to pop-ups to like um, applicants for employees so from there i kind of filter those emails to like the boarding like retail team or kirsten if it's like a design project or liz if it's like a questions for customers so um my day can kind of go in different aspects as well and then i also too am like a very creative person like kirsten so i'll have like a whole 13 things of tabs open and all of a sudden I'm like, why is my computer running slow? I have to open a whole new browser. So it's like a whole other issue too when you have a whole other browser. Um, but yeah, that's mainly my day. I come in and just make sure everything's like smooth sailing um, and that everyone has everything they need. Uh, one thing I noticed when Meredith actually did chop hers out yesterday, if you're in an operations or, or a position similar to that, uh, if you can envision the chart up here, Meredith, when she charted hers, all actually were at the top and they all pretty much ran. It was very hard for me because I felt like everything was at a level 10, so I was like, how do I know? Yeah, right. <laughs> and, and that can be a mixture of your personality, but it can also be your role. So I think what's interesting is in a room like this to have a creative and creatives in the audience, but then also someone who may be in an operations kind of feeling where her everything is important to her. That customer email coming through is as equally as important as Rally House is picking up a large order for the start of the blue season. All of that is, is important. So just interesting kind of things that you can take away from that. Um, I get derailed. This was kind of an interesting, funny joke around here. Is So I'm cruising through my day, and this kind of period right here is for me is like the best part. I'm just running through my day. And then one of the girls in the office asked me if I'd heard of said rapper. So if you're like me, and this happens to all of us, um, my brain is gone at that point. So I need to know who it is. Um, so I spend the next 30 minutes, who's this rapper, listening to him on Spotify, researching the Wikipedia page, I need to know, texting my wife, does she know who this is, like all this kind of stuff. Um, and, and this is real, this is what, how, how it works. And this is interesting, because it's actually, for me, it's graphing where my thought is and where my head is. So if I'm in this point, I can't create, like for a collaboration like Emos, I can't partnership, uh, create relationships and different partnerships that we want to have. So I got to try and get out of that mode, but realistically, working here, that's going to happen every day. Um, so, moved offices. So we moved offices back here, we did some rearranging, Kirsten wasn't here, Firth wasn't here, so um, micromanagers were on vacation, so we were able to actually get some stuff done. Um, I was gonna, always going to slide that in. Yeah. Um, so these are things that happen throughout the day. So we're working, then we're moving offices, we're Googling stuff about rappers, all kinds of weird anomalies. I try to, um, then I go back to thinking about family, all right, so I'm back, okay, I'm going to pick up my son today, he's at daycare, I should check in on his camera, make sure that he's, you know, sleeping and all the things that he does. Um, pulling back, panicking, uh, do you guys, does anyone get to that panic point at like 4 o'clock? Um, it happens every day here, and I think that the, the, the most productive hour is 4 to 5 here, because we're all like, oh crap, I have to get out of here, but I still have a deadline to meet. So around this point, the panic mode hits in, the office goes quiet, people start working more um, and communicating extra than what we typically would do. So that's that panicking moment for me. It happens every day. It happened this morning at 6 a.m., I guess, like um, making sure this is prepared. I try to finish my day with like, check-ins is a little bit of a blanket statement, but Liz to my right basically does all of our ordering. So everything you see here, and we have so many different accounts right now, that uh, are reordering or new items that Kirsten and I are developing or, or existing and things like that, things we're getting rid of, uh, it's a lot to manage. And people ask me all the time how we do all this. And, and again, I just wanted a t-shirt that I liked wearing more. So to get to this point requires like a, an attention to detail so that we don't put ourselves in a compromising position, position financially or, or staff and things like that. And Liz helps keep us on the straight and narrow. So here is Liz. Hi, like you said, um, I wear a lot of hats. <laughs> um, I answer all the customer emails so they can be an importance like, give me some free stickers, and I'm like, they're for sale. <laughs> um, or, <laughs> or I have a hole in my shirt, I need it replaced, and it was for a gift, it's this Friday, can you expedite it, things like that. Um, and then I also handle all of our boutique accounts, so any boutique we sell to in the St. Louis area, they place the order through me, I order their goods, and facilitate how to get it to them. 
Um, and then the last thing, uh, well, two more things. Inventory, um, I'm constantly checking in with Meredith and everyone on the floor on where we're at on inventory because I place all of the reorders and it's a very time sensitive thing. Um, and then the last thing is the finances of the business, which is just constantly checking the bank accounts, seeing payroll, um, all of those different things. So um, it's not easy to be around the creatives, but it is a blast. I, they make me laugh constantly. But I'm like he said, I'm the mom. I'm like, okay, um, yeah, let's get back to task. Let's stop talking about the wrapper. Um, <laughs> or we were supposed to be at that meeting 10 minutes ago and we haven't left yet. Uh, things like that. But um, I feel like my the email is my biggest savior. Um, I keep them all in there. I don't delete them until my task is over. So that's my way. Um, like Kirsten with tabs. Um, my email is everything to me, um, as well as a calendar, as well as my lists. I love checking things off and saying they're done. Um, so it's really hard. I, so I probably annoy them because I want to check that off. Um, so my email could have something like give me free stickers, but it also could have Schnooks needs to jump on a call. And I'm like, stop everything. Like, let's all get on this call. Um, as well as I can order from Rally House, which has five stores, and they need things for the Cardinals playoff. So, um, I'd say managing my time and managing the people around me and uh, using my email as my check mark box to delete when it's taken care of and also filing helps. Um, but yeah, so I, that's my way. I also set alarms on my phone for certain times because of deadlines. <laughs> so yeah. If you have a hard time being organized, get yourself a list. <laughs> yeah. Everyone needs a list. Um, and I think most of us at our offices do, so uh, it, it's nice to have. So um, we're wrapping, as you'll see, this is, okay, I want to back up one, I don't want to mess it up, but it says driving and social. Uh, I have a bad habit. I, when I started the business, we had uh, you know, no Instagram following, and I remember taking it over with 200 and something, and now I think we just clicked over 40,000, and that takes a lot of work. A lot of people have questions about how we uh, Instagram and social, and I think that's a whole other conversation, but where I spend my time on social media is unfortunately driving home or driving into work, which means I drive home like this the whole time. Which, as a, a dad, is not something I need to be doing. So, um, everyone get up and leave. Yeah. <laughs> so it's an, you know I think that's an important. The, the social media for me is how we drive, how we got our business to this point. Marketing through social media it has been everything, and that's a that is vital to us. Uh, it's it's my baby, and we have multiple babies here, I guess. But for me. Uh, that's how I communicate with customers. That's how I respond back to DMs. People love that we still interact via direct message on Instagram. That's how we promote and market. Uh, from a fulfillment standpoint, anything that we put out on social media that day, sales for that item increase. So we can use it to manipulate our sales really well. We can also use it um, to highlight different community events that are happening or individuals or different places. The Blues game is tonight, so our social media will probably be filled with Blues posts and getting people hyped for the game and things like that. So staying relevant through social media is um, so important to us, and I think that we have been able to do to do it well for a long time, and I think we're actually going to kind of evolve the brand now to a point where we are a, a platform to express what's happening in St. Louis versus trying to sell t-shirts. Because I think a lot of people know who we are, they like who we are, but they, they want to see us involved in the community more, so we're going to kind of change it a little bit and, and switch into that a, a tad more. So what uh, my takeaway looking at this, because it's basically at the end right here, uh, yeah, that's a crap one, um, call with the attorney, so NHL. Um, so <laughs> what is important is if looking at this as, as its entirety. So I think if you are able to, one day this week, I think it's fine if you get home, speak it into your phone, what it looks like, map it out yourself. Uh, it just find, find it interesting because what I was able to do is find out areas for myself as the leader of this business where um, I'm efficient, where I'm not efficient, where I can spend more time, where I can spend less time. So that was Wednesday last week for me. And as you can see, it really does move around. Um, and that's just a regular day uh, from my point of view. The key is that we're always starting and we're ending. So if you map this out and you feel like you've only got to here or you're back here, then I feel like obviously there's going to be some red flags. So for me, to be able to map that out and feel like we actually achieved something, I remember on this day, we beat day last year kind of thing on sales. So, okay, sales, we're doing well, we can pay people, we can do things like that. So these are all the checklists that run through my head, of course. Um, these are my notes, and I took this down immediately after I had charted it out, uh, so I didn't have really a lot of time to think about it, but I think that makes the best notes. A lot of high, meaning a lot of high important stuff. If you're somebody who feels like you are constantly dealing with high important stuff, that can really stress you out. It can take a toll on you. Um, 
Staff questions, are they good or are they bad? I don't know. Um, do I have to answer them? Do I have people that could answer them for me? That's something that we'll, we'll have to keep juggling. Um, I've got family's life here because I, I noticed I, no, I thought of that twice. Um, that's obviously important to me. Since having a family, the business has basically been the way that I can provide a really good life for my, for my son. Um, no me, no arch prowl. Don't drive an Instagram. So if I drive an Instagram and something happens to me, I don't have arch prowl anymore. Not, not, I think the business still runs. These guys will, will kill it. But for me, um, I wouldn't be here. Uh, family time still leaves me moving forward. Something to notice is having those thoughts that are outside of the office. Um, if you're a business owner, if you're somebody in a management position, having life things happen. You had to go to the dermatologist yesterday, sorry about your hand. Um, little things like that, they happen. Um, it's about understanding and recognizing them and being and applying it to your day so you know that it is part of you moving forward. Um, I'm easily distracted. Kirsten and I are easily distracted. We distract a lot of other people, so we're constantly trying to find ways to, to avoid that. So mapping it out, you quickly find if you're an easily distracted person. If you're bouncing up and down, then that could be on you. Um, and then this wasn't planned, this was an afterthought. And I say that because to be standing here today, talking to you guys, to have these guys up here with me, is not something I ever envisioned. I'm thankful that I'm here, but uh, it, it's great to think that you can have a dream of something you want to become a reality, and it actually works out. Uh, we're very fortunate, I think we all love our jobs, and I think we, we're doing something amazing. And now it's, we feel like it's our opportunity, we have a platform now to like highlight that, to use that for St. Louis and grow that in a positive way. Um, and I think this can be a place. We always wanted this place to be somewhere where you could come and visit, bring friends, and make it a stopping point. You're grabbing your coffee, you've got friends in town, you want to bring them through a cool place. That's what I always envision this spot to be. Uh, and I think we're doing a good job of that, but we still also know we have a long way to go. So that was kind of my, my summary of flow. Um, I hopefully you liked it. But uh, it was interesting because it's a weird topic. I mean, to just be given a term and figure out how to do that. So hopefully you enjoyed it. I think what I would take from that, if there's anything, is like chart out your day. I found it very interesting. I still looked back at it last night, found it interesting to look where I moved, my brain moved, because everyone in this room has a different brain and thinks about things differently. Something I observed yesterday was the five of us all wrote our version of Flow and everyone wrote it in different forms. Kirsten drew hers, you sent pictures, Liz was wrote list, Meredith wrote like four pages yesterday. Um, and, and that no word of lie, all that is true. So everyone processes differently and their flow is different. So it's understanding that and as a business owner or a manager or as an employee, knowing that other people exist in your environment, in your own flow, that are flowing in a different kind of way and sync. So, that was kind of my take on that. Hopefully you guys didn't think it was too bad. Um, so.